You're listening to episode number 25 of the Alleria Masterclass Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's Brian Tripp. I'm here in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. We are on episode number 25. We're a quarter of a century old, and I, I'm, I'm really appreciative to you guys that are listening, been tuning in every week um, to listen to our podcast. Um, without you guys, I mean, I wouldn't even be able to do this. So very, very fortunate, very thankful for you guys um, and all the people that have reached out to me. Well, I'm very, very thankful for that. I um, want to let you know about some stuff we got going on. Please check out our website. Um, all of our content, all of our information, all of our events are going to be right there on the website, alaria.com, A-L-A-R-E-I-A. So pretty much like where, when our meetings are, second Thursday night of every month, we're now meeting at the Embassy Suites um, Hotel in Homewood for the rest of the year, for the rest of 2017. So if you're in town or if you're here in Birmingham or if you're coming from out of town and you're um, com- going to be in Birmingham, check us out second Thursday night of every single month. We're going to be right there at the Embassy Suites. So definitely check out the meetings. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I uh, hope you're listening or watching the Daily Ria show. We've got our Daily Ria show. It's on our YouTube page. You can search Ala Ria on YouTube, and you can also search for us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Ala Ria. Well, we've got a great guest today, as we usually do. We've got just We've we've been I've been very fortunate to be able to talk to a lot of great guests. Um, Jonathan Mednick is here today. How you doing today, Jonathan? I'm doing great, Brian. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Jonathan, just to give a little bit of background, I'm gonna let him give it. But um, he's been investing in, in well in Birmingham for five or six years, but he's been a real estate investor for over 15 years, done over a thousand transactions. He is uh, the co-founder of reitrader.com, that which we're gonna get into. We're gonna talk about that. But the first thing I want to do is, you know, Jonathan, tell us for the people that don't know who you are, kind of give us a little bit of background. Who are you? What are you up to right now? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm originally from New York City, so I'm a Yankee in the Birmingham market, and I worked in the uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami market for uh, many years, and when the market uh, went down, um, decided the fix and flip market wasn't as viable as it, uh, as it was back then, started looking for other markets and uh, came across um, some interesting stats about Birmingham and it's a fix and flip market, it's a buy and hold market and uh, started buying for a group out of LA, was going back and forth um, from uh, Fort Lauderdale to Birmingham and uh, came out, bought nine houses and looking in the market, I'm thinking, boy, you know, this is such a great market, I can do a lot here, but I can't do it from Fort Lauderdale. So spoke to the group out of LA and said, how do you guys feel about me moving to Birmingham? And they were on board and moved here September 2011, been here ever since, Mm -hmm. done probably somewhere in the $400 400 range of um, either flipping turnkey flips or buying holding properties uh, in in the five and a half year period I've been here now. That's awesome. There's a lot I can talk about right there. So you primarily moved to Birmingham because you thought it was a hot market. Exactly. In 2011, when I was looking at uh, other areas, uh, the market was shifting from more of a a buy and flip market to really passive cash flow. People wanted to hold properties. You couldn't do that in South Florida. Taxes and insurance are way too high. The cost of acquisitions are way too high. Uh, Cost of labor is high and cost of living is high. So I wanted to look at other markets and I wanted to be in secondary markets because I, that was where the uh, opportunities were for investors. So for, was, for, do you, from a cash flow standpoint? Yes. Okay. From cash flow. Now I, I still wanted to do the fix and flip because, you know, we did a lot in, in Fort Lauderdale. We were doing a lot of fix and flips. We were doing a lot of wholesaling deals as well. I had a couple partners when the market tanked there in 2007, 2008, it was time to look for other opportunities. So I was still working that market for another three years before I decided it was time to move. But then I, as I was talking to a lot of investors, a lot of them were shifting from buying and flipping to buying and holding. So in my due diligence, looking at markets out there, I kind of discovered that, hey, Birmingham's a great market. It's a temperate climate. You don't have to worry about winterization uh, costs. Um, you've got low taxes, low insurance. Last year, Forbes came out. Um, Sixty thousand dollars and under, if you're if that's your income, that Birmingham was the number one city in the country, uh, if uh, in terms of uh, affordability, if you're making sixty thousand dollars a year. So wow. you put out stats like that, um, even though in 2011 I, I was already ahead of the curve, decided to make that move, and it was kind of interesting 
um, when I moved here and, and, and you know, I, I just meet everyone in the investor community, there was no one who moved here from outside just to work the market. And I specifically came to Birmingham yeah. to work the real estate market. That seems, uh, I mean, obviously it's worked, you know, obviously you're, you're very you know, intuitive and you did your research and you understood that, but it seems to someone who doesn't, doesn't know, especially me, like that seems like kind of counterintuitive that it's, you know, you're moving to Birmingham from Miami. I feel like Miami is where that's the hot, that's mm-hmm. the hot market. Mm-hmm. But you want, I guess you wanted to primarily, were you brokering the deals for the group out of LA? Is mm-hmm. that what it was? Or you were right, right. The difference between you, you like, you've got your primary markets. You've got Miami, you've got Phoenix, LA, New York, um, uh, and, and some of the other larger markets, Atlanta, yeah, yeah. and even now Nashville. Uh, those markets are very uh, hot. It's cost prohibitive in terms of the dollar amount to go in and to invest in those areas to to either wholesale or to actually fix and flip. So when you look at the secondary markets, mm-hmm. the barrier to entries are much lower. Right. Where you can pick up, you know, properties for ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars. So Birmingham was the kind of market in which to do that. Gotcha. So that, that's it. Kind of just leads us right into let's let's talk about Birmingham. Like today, you know, you came here in two thousand eleven. Is that what it was? Yes. Came here in two thousand eleven. Now we're two thousand seventeen. What have you seen change with Birmingham in the last six years? And then kind of give us kind of a snid, kind of a snap snapshot of where we are today. Okay. My, when I moved here, I lived downtown mm-hmm. and on North Side. It was, you know, I figure I'm a city kid. I want to be in the big city, the biggest city in Alabama is Birmingham. And after hours, it was a Walking Dead. There was nothing going on downtown. When they um, provided historic tax credits um, to uh, the state um, uh, in, in Montgomery, that opened up, you know, two years ago, a lot of development and opportunity. For a lot of investors now, of course, those types of investors are more developers. Uh, so, if you just look at, at the downtown area, you've got so much building, so much, so many millennials moving downtown. They're redeveloping these these storefronts into condos. Um, fellow investor had bought the Federal Treasury Building downtown, right by the courthouse. Mm-hmm. They're Converting those into condos. Yeah. Um, you've got, you know, Regents Field that moved downtown. You've got Railroad Park. Public's just open. Uh, it, it's just booming down there. Has it spread to the outer areas as much? I don't really think so. However, when I moved here, uh, there wasn't as much competition. It, it was a free for all. We were picking up houses, as you know, in the areas in which we operate for. You know, ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Those same properties today, you can't get them for less than thirty-five to forty thousand right. dollars. So, all of the properties we bought back then for either ourselves or investors, in which we renovated and either kept them or, or sold them, those investors are sitting pretty and they're doing they're doing well. As I said earlier, moving to uh, Birmingham from out of state and looking around and not meeting anyone else who has moved here from outside the market, right? told me there was a real good opportunity. So mm-hmm. back then, in 2011 to I think 2014, um, it was a great buy and hold market. There was not a lot of investors moving in from out of town. And I'd say probably, um, I would say probably 75% of what we were doing were buy and hold or turnkey flips for other investors. When I mean turnkey flip, we buy the property, we would take title, we would renovate the property, put the tenant into it, hand off the property management, and sell it to another investor as a buy and hold who wants cash flow from day one. Right. That was a very successful model from 2011 to probably in the middle of 2014. We were doing a lot of that. Uh, we dabbled in the fix and flip market. In the last year to year and a half, what I've seen is a, a, uh, a complete shift. Hmm. I meet investors now who have moved here from Phoenix, from, from I, one who's moved here from Beverly Hills, California, a good friend of mine. Right. I know guys from Atlanta, from Maryland. Uh, I, they're all moving in. I, a wholesaler I know is you buy from, he's from New Orleans, and he came here you know, a year ago to work the market. You've got all these investors coming in, in the town. Wow. I get calls every day from investors who now want to buy in the Birmingham market. Uh, so... A lot of investors are starting to move into this market, whether they're physically moving here or they want to deploy their capital here. 
today, for us, we've been very fortunate uh, because not only do we have a, a portfolio of rental properties and we still do the turnkey flips, mm-hmm. that probably now accounts for maybe 60 to 65% of our, of our transactions. Right. Um, we're doing a lot of retail flips. Yeah. And so what we're seeing, we've got projects in Avondale, Presswood, even in Homewood, we're doing high-end um, flips as well. A year and a half ago, I never thought that would be the case. And that's what I specialize in Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. So the market has opened up not just you know to be able to buy and hold properties, which you can still do quite well in Birmingham, but also you can flip here. Mm-hmm. And you don't get too many markets which you can do that. You can't do this in Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Mm-hmm. You can't do it in any of the major markets. You can't do it in Nashville, Atlanta anymore. Jonathan, I, th- I think the biggest takeaway for me from from what I just got from what you just said is that I feel like what's made you very successful is that you've adapted and you've changed with the market. The market's changing a little bit and you've changed with it. Is that fair to say? Yeah. So a lot how of important is that too? Yeah. A lot of investors, you know, when I talk to them, when they're just starting out, the key t- key takeaway is evolve or die. Mm-hmm. If you're a wholesaler and that is your only model, you have to adapt into certain markets. You have to evolve beyond your core competencies. I was talking to an investor yesterday. He, he picked up a property. He was thinking about wholesaling it. Um, now he decides he's going he's gonna to keep it because he needs some long-term passive income. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to get outside of your comfort zone and look outside the box and approach a deal or, or a property uh, in, in such a way that you have multiple exit strategies. Don't ever go, in, go into a property thinking, this is one, one exit strategy that I'm going to uh, employ. Because if the market shifts, if the economy shifts yeah. and it crashes, you don't want to be left holding properties that you cannot afford to keep. No question. No question. I want to talk about that, uh, the multiple exit strategies here in a second, but I I want to kind of get your sense of where do you think we're headed? Where do you think Birmingham's headed in the next just even year or two or three? Do you think like some that we're headed for a correction? The difference with Birmingham as opposed to other markets, and, and I tell a lot of investors from out of town, I mean, we have a lot of investors on the West Coast and East Coast. We have investors overseas as well. We have investors all over Canada. And when they specifically talk about wanting to buy in Birmingham versus buying in Miami or Nashville or Atlanta, is Birmingham does not have the wild swings. Right. We don't have these huge dips. The average appreciation in Birmingham last time I checked was about 1.76% cumulatively. Mm-hmm. When I was in the Miami market, I mean, it was uncommon. It wasn't, it was common that. We're in the middle of a rehab, and I look at the comps and say, okay, this is a 140 house. Two months by the time we're done renovating it, I check the comps again, it's 190. It, it's just the way it is. That's not going to happen in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's slow and steady. If It's a conservative market. Um, people will do quite well here, but you're not going to have the wild swings and dips with any market correction we have. So Birmingham is a stable market. It's a solid market. Um, you know, as I said, uh, you know, offline to you, it's a moderate climate. We don't have the cost of winterization. Uh, so yes, we get the same returns as properties, let's say in Indianapolis or in Chicago or in Kansas City, but we don't have harsh winters. So there's a cost savings, uh, you know, uh, that that go that goes with that. Yeah, definitely. So I want to shift gears just a little bit. You mentioned exit strategies. I want to talk about. Um, you know, kind of the power of having multiple streams of revenue, which I feel like you have. You you're not just a one trick pony. I'm not. You know, I have a brokerage. I've got a lot. Of, I do a lot of owner financing. I've got multiple businesses. Talk to that for a second. Like the importance of having multiple streams of revenue, just even specifically within real estate. Right. Right. Every time I go look at a property, um, I'm trying to think of uh, multiple ways I'm going to exit that property. I'm a big fan of of um, is it Alan. Multiple streams of income. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I'm looking at a property, it, it is a first thing I'm thinking of is in a buy and hold. This is something we want to keep in inventory, mm-hmm. keep that passive cash flow in house. Is if not, is this a turnkey flip? I'm going to buy this, renovate it, put a tenant in there, cash flow it, and then sell it to a buy and hold investor. Is this going to be a retail flip? Um, just sell it to an owner occupant, um, which we do quite often. So, uh, and lastly, and this is for a lot of 
wholesalers and investors who are not licensed. Often is the case when I go on an appointment and uh, the difference between myself and a wholesaler and investor is when I'm sitting with that, that owner occupant or seller of the property, um, if the wholesaler and investor cannot make their numbers work in terms of either their spread or mm -hmm. their profit margin, they need to walk away from the deal. Me, I'm happy to say, I'll be your broker. I'm a licensed broker in Alabama. I'll be your agent, and I will help you sell that property, put it on the MLS. At least I walk out, maybe not with a contract, but with a listing agreement. And Definitely. that happens probably about 25 to 30% of the time. So to be able to walk out, the goal here is every appointment you want to walk out with a contract, whether it's a contract to buy or whether it's a listing agreement. Um, often is the case, um, we, I get a lot of properties off market. Uh, the first thing I do is I try to sell them you know, to uh, off market to investors. Um, and if that doesn't work, I'll put it on the MLS and you know, end up selling it that way. The key is to be able to move inventory. You've got yes. to think of it as a volume play. There are, are some transactions where I've made as little as $500 and others where I've made as much as twenty or $30,000. Yeah. For me, it's all about volume. As long as every action, every effort I take each week, at the end of the week leads to uh, a check, I'm happy. Some investors have certain criteria. Well, if I can't make at least $3,000 on a wholesale fee, I can't move on it. If I can't make $15,000 on a retail flip, it's not for me. Um, you, you have to think outside and understand that if you have a license as an agent, mm -hmm. that creates a whole new opportunity for you to have another revenue stream that you otherwise wouldn't have if you were just an investor. So you're, you're telling me kind of offline too about um, potentially getting your real estate license so you can offer that um, extra, you know, maybe that extra stream. How soon, I guess, is too soon to where you wouldn't recommend that? Like if you're get, get just just now brand new, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know that you'd recommend someone getting their real estate license right out of the gate, would you? Well, or would you? I'm, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I recently went to a, another um, uh, meetup uh, locally, uh, and and it was put on by a couple of agents, and their whole focus was to bring in these investors and to offer them investment opportunities where, you know, they would be the selling agent mm -hmm. on their behalf mm -hmm. or they had listings uh, and they were all flips, retail flips. Mm -hmm. But when I looked around, um, there was no one in the room except myself and one other investor that were active. They were all new. Mm -hmm. And so there was no one in that room that really should have been a fix and flip investor. They were all wholesalers. And so, my advice to most of them is that don't get into flipping houses in terms of fixing and flipping. You need to start small. You need to get into wholesaling, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, which is low barrier to entry in terms of the costs. Uh, get a few deals under your belt, and then as you gain more experience, you have a mentor like with you. Um, you know, partner on the deals because you've got your buyers list, which is great. And then as you get more experience. Then you start branching out and you start looking at other ways in which to be successful at this. Mm -hmm. um, the hardest thing um, I've learned, and when I first got into a, to this, one of my original mentors, when I used to go to the meetup groups um, in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale, and those groups, 200 people would show up right. in a room and they would bring in national speakers. And my uh, original mentor once said to me, you know, I've been going, and he's very successful, I've been doing this 35 years, and he said, I've been going to all those investor club meetings for, for years, and he said, you're the only one that actually came out and is doing it and became successful at it. The, the percentage is so small for people to be able to be successful at this full time that it's important that when they start, they not only pick the appropriate strategy, which to me is starting with wholesaling, but also have a good mentoring, which to partner on the first couple of deals to get their feet wet. And then when mm -hmm. they feel they have the confidence and they want to be independent from the mentor, go off and do your own deals and develop your own buyers list. Um, when it comes to, and to answer your question, to, when it comes to um, getting your real estate license, the statistic is that first time real estate agents within the first 12 months of getting their license, 90% of them fail. And uh, the reason is lack of buyers and lack of sellers. So 
it's an uphill battle to start as a wholesaler. It's an uphill battle to start as an agent. However, if you're doing both in tandem, then your opportunities double. Why not, you know, learn about wholesaling, do a few deals as well. I know a lot of agents who wholesale other than us. And on the flip side, if you can do a one or two retail deals mm -hmm. for friends and family mm -hmm. or to help represent other investors who are looking to purchase properties where you're just acting as an agent, yeah. why not do that? So yeah, I would advocate new investors, whether they're wholesaling or uh, what other uh, strategy they're looking to employ, they say, yeah, go ahead and get licensed. A lot of investors say, well, don't want to do that. I don't want to be regulated. I don't want to follow the rules. And I will tell you, I don't do anything, yeah. and you're licensed as well. We don't do anything that's going to jeopardize our license. I follow the rules. Yeah. Absolutely 100%. That's, that's such a silly statement to me. It is. So many investors do that. You have access to the MLS to run your comps. That's right. You have access to enter the properties whenever you need to. And even a lot of deals that we do in which we're buying and I'm acting as the agent, we're getting 2.5%, 3% coming back right. to us. And that savings, why wouldn't you want to be licensed? Yeah. And kind of piggyback off that, you're going to learn so much about respect. If you're brand new and you go get your license right out of the gate, how much are you going to learn about real estate? Just even going through the course, I'm not saying that the course is the greatest thing on earth, but if you don't know anything about real estate and you're brand new, yeah. it could be. I typically tell people not to in yeah. the beginning, yeah. um, but I, I think it's more of a distraction thing. Yeah, I, I think for me it, but, it's that it, it's not so much a distraction. I would agree with you with some people, but I think it, it, it doubles the opportunities that they otherwise yeah. may not have access to. And, and I will tell you one thing about the school. When I moved here and I... I Immediately, you know, over the summer before I moved here in 2011, I studied for the course online. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was 10, 11 years. I, I, I would, at that time, I was, I was uh, in real estate. Just going from that course, believe me, I learned so much. Things I did yeah. not oh, know yeah. of 11 years of experience as a real estate investor, I didn't know about. And I got a lot of value out of that course. So... Yeah, I think there's a lot of value into getting your real estate license immediately. However, if you find a good mentor like Brian Tripp, Thank you, who is sir. going to <laughs> partner on deals, they find the deals, you'll help them walk through it, they'll yeah. take your course, and then they bring you the deals, you partner on it. To me, if I was starting out and I wasn't going to get my real estate license, no. I'd come to you as a, as a mentor and say, let me find the deals, help me learn. I will go out, find the deals, bring them to you. We'll partner, we'll split the profits until I feel like I can go off and do it on my own. Yeah, very good. Let's. I want to talk about REI Trader. Sure. Very interesting concept. When I first heard it, you know, when I first started, um, understand. I want you to. I, I can explain it, but I do a terrible job at it. I want you to kind of um, explain what it is and actually like why you started it. Right. You know, a couple of years ago. Uh, Jeff and I, Jeff Shadrick, my business partner, and I, we were we had so many ways in which to get properties, and we're we're on everyone's email list, not just locally but nationally, just bombarded with opportunities, not just with properties but with lenders, and we just kind of realized Jeff Jeff actually came up with the idea of, of REI Trader is if we can develop a, a platform that aggregates all of these investment properties, both turnkey and wholesale properties under one roof where investors can come to and have access to all of the inventory, photos, financials, property details in multiple markets mm -hmm. where there is local infrastructure that supports whether it's property management or renovations that I think the time has come to do that. And REI Trader provides exactly that type of platform. We're in about 15 markets. Obviously, Birmingham is our primary market. And we have investors all over the country, all over the world, who buy properties off the platform. We're right now just recently um, just went to contract yesterday on a property in Memphis for seventy thousand dollars. The investor is in California or Seattle. He's mm -hmm. never going to see the property, but you know he feels confident that you know this is a platform that he can use to acquire properties. So tell us how it actually works. Then you you guys are acting as a broker. I'm assuming. Or you're in Alabama, you are. Right, in yeah. Alabama, we are. When it's out of state, we are receiving client referral fees. Okay. So, um, you know, individuals who are interested, they're registered on the website. They have access to all the inventory. They can choose their markets. They can look at financials. 
if they're interested in a property, they just sit uh, to submit offer button. It will send an inquiry directly to their assigned sales rep. Mm -hmm. We'll then get on the phone and it'll kind of walk through the numbers, help them better understand, um, you know, what type of property it is, what type of classification is a B class or C class property. Uh, the next step is to really reach out to that turnkey provider in that market, right. uh, TKP. Uh, number one, to make sure it's available, and uh, then to start the negotiation process. And then it's as simple as you know, you're buying a property. We just put together the paperwork. Once we put together the paperwork, we still have third-party home inspections uh, from a licensed home inspector that goes out there. Half of all investors are going to finance the property, so you've got to go through that due diligence appraisal. Um, underwriting to get it to the closing table, and then the rest are going to be cash buyers. Um, when it's here in Birmingham specifically, uh, myself or my team, we try to put boots on the ground. We'll, we'll still go into the property. We'll do all tenant interviews. We will um, take updated photos. We'll give them an idea of the condition of the property. Mm -hmm. Usually, we'll meet the home inspector there. Mm -hmm. um, we have a like a three-page tenant interview um, checklist that we go through. Uh, which really comes in handy because often what we don't want is for an investor who's going to buy the property to find out the tenant is vacating within a few weeks. Um, it ha it's happened once, mm. um, and that just tenant wasn't forthcoming that they weren't happy and they were going to move out. So, um, you know, sometimes we've got the tenant issues or there's issues with the property, um, and we try to make sure that uh, the investor is going to get exactly um, what yeah. we discuss, and and it's going to be a turnkey cash flow property. And the tenant's stable, they're happy, and they're not going anywhere. So once we get through the tenant interviews and we get through the uh, appraisal and the inspections, uh, then we just head to closing like any other normal product, Very any good. other normal property. And it's another stream of revenue, yeah. like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of streams of revenue, which is important for me, is you know, we, I, I've got rentals, so I've got my passive income uh, coming in every month. Um, we've got um, income coming in from from our turnkey flips, uh, income coming in from you know certifying the property um, when we sell it, um, and also when I'm brokering deals for other investors who want to acquire right. um, and flip their own properties here in Birmingham. We work with a, a few local investors who want access to the MLS, and I'm just representing them. Sometimes we're working with um, the big hedge funds from out of out of town who have their own infrastructure, their own resources, but they need uh, a, a realtor, a broker who thinks like them and, and thinks like an investor. And so we get a lot of those calls and I am just brokering the deal. So those are the four or five ways in which, you know, I have rev different revenue streams mm -hmm. coming in. Gotcha. That's awesome. And Jonathan is an act, obviously active buyer here in town. Um, so Jonathan, give people, you know, uh, a way to get a, get in touch with you. If they want to have a property they want to submit to you um, here in Birmingham. Such like that. Sure. Uh, they can go to their website, um, reitrader.com. They could also send an email to Jonathan, J O N A T H A N, at reitrader.com. All right. There you go. Submit your properties to Jonathan. They're buying up. They're buying up a lot here. There are a lot of groups that are. Jonathan's another great cash buyer um, to put on your buyers list for sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on the show. The main reason I wanted to have Jonathan on. Very, very knowledgeable about the Birmingham market. He was studying the Birmingham market when he wasn't even here, when he wasn't even in Birmingham. Very knowledgeable about our market. Um, love having people on the show that, that can provide that kind of value to you guys. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe to the podcast. Rate us, review us. We love you guys. We'll see you next time.